92. Okay, we have finished Indian Council Act 1892. I hope there is no doubt in that particular act. See, that is significant. Yeah. So, why that act is significant? That act is significant because it is considered in the constitutional work done by the moderates or in the political reforms. See, moderates have two kind of problem that they saw in front of them. So, first problem that they saw was on political front. Okay, political. Second problem that they saw was economic. Political in the sense they are looking that British are not running administration in the favor of India. So when British are not running in the administration in the favor of India, they started demanding various things. Whether it was expansion of legislative council, whether it was education, or whether it was giving more power to legislative council, whether it was introducing election, whether it was more Indians should sit there. So they started demanding for political reasons or they started making political agitation. Now they understood this agitation is necessary because until and unless they sit at the top, they cannot take care of their fellow countrymen. So in order to make the life of fellow countrymen better, it is necessary that they sit in the government. Only when they will sit in the government, they will be able to take action from the top. And as a result, benefit will pass down. See, uh, this moderate people had no connection with masses. If you take, like, if these are moderate leaders, they have no connection with masses. So there are two reasons for this. Why they do not have connection with masses? Because first, they were not aiming at any revolution. They never wanted to throw British away. They never wanted to fight with British army. So when you do not want to fight with British, when you do not want to throw them away, why do you need masses? You do not need masses. Second thing is, these people were educated, these people were uneducated. So in any society, you will always see that there is this distinction or there is this breakup of ties between educated and uneducated. So these people used to think that these people are not ready to support their agitation because their agitation was writing petition, it was uh, demanding administration. So these people do not know that. So these people cannot support these people. So as a result, what moderates wanted is that just, just wanted to educate the opinion of the people that see, become aware about your rights, become aware about your uh, civil rights, become aware about your liberty, become aware about your political rights. You should fight for election. You should get election. So, but these people never wanted support of these masses because agitation of these people was not such that which requires support of masses. When I will go to extremists, it will be more clear because extremists will believe in action. So when you are believing in action, when you are fighting terror with terror, when you are fighting British hand to hand, then you need support of masses, right? But here, these people never wanted to throw British. So first, their demands were such that for which they do not need support of masses. And second, their agitation method was such for which they do not need support of masses. Because see, what will happen when extremists will come, they will say that if this person has uh, done Jaliawala Bagh, so let's kill the officer or General Dyer who has done this action. So in order to kill a British officer, you do not need educated people or you do not need to educate someone. If they have this nationalist feeling and if they are ready to sacrifice their life, they will do. It doesn't matter whether they are educated or they are uneducated. So as a result, these people had very less connection with the masses. Right? They thought that this mass is not ready for the revolution. So first, they have to be educated upon their political rights. So for this political problem, because of the pressure that they have built upon the British, British passed Indian Council Act 1892. So this was the achievement that you can say of the moderates in the political front. Is this part clear? Is this part clear, political front? Now another problem that saw they saw is in the economy. They saw that British are ruling India in such a way that it will serve interest of British economy and not Indian economy. They were aware, aware about that. We have seen all the economic impacts. Now when they have seen economic impacts, they wanted to save Indian economy. But how will they save? They are not the government. They cannot impose import duty. They cannot restrict movement of raw material. They cannot stop British merchants from doing business. So what they will do? So they here give the idea of Swadeshi. Swadeshi. So what was this idea of Swadeshi? This was the second work that moderates have done. Because these were the two major problems that they saw. First, they saw that root of all problem is this political demand. That until and unless we sit in the government, we cannot do anything for Indians. So let's go and sit in the government. 
on the other hand they say that they see that economy is deteriorating so how to prevent economy from deteriorating or how to stop under development so to stop under development they give the idea of swadeshi so your next question will be what is this idea of swadeshi so this idea of swadeshi was use of indian goods use of indian goods what these people are saying here is that if you will buy indian goods gold will not go out of our country not only you buy indian goods you buy indian goods in the sense this good should be produced in india so you buy all those things which are produced in india you do not buy foreign goods if you will buy foreign goods money will go out of our country so as a result what idea they promoted is that how to solve economic problem of the country at that time the main economic problem was that india was flooded with british goods so as a result they thought that how can we save indian economy we can save indian economy if we promote use of swadeshi or use of indian goods so they give the idea of swadeshi to promote uh, economy or to make sure that indian economy recovers from under development so their main focus here see this has not been taken as a movement after partition of bengal i will again take up swadeshi movement their swadeshi and boycott will be taken as a movement there is a difference between idea and movement okay right now i'm not going into that distinction because i first i have to tell you about swadeshi and boycott movement then i will again ask you that recall what we have done when we were doing models so here they have just given an idea that they used to propagate that please use indian goods if you will use indian goods gold will not go it is similar to the situation where our current prime finance minister says please don't buy gold because if you are buying gold we have to pay in dollars and we have to face current account deficit two major commodity that india imports today is oil and gold oil is necessary because our economy will not run without oil but gold is not necessary gold is an unproductive asset but india is one of the biggest importer of gold so they are saying don't buy gold it is an unproductive asset please stop buying gold if you will buy gold dollar will go out of india similarly at that time they used to say don't buy foreign goods if you will buy foreign goods indian currency will go out so buy indian goods so they promoted use of more and more indian goods is it clear what idea they gave to solve economic problem see here at this stage they will not take it up as a movement they will take it up as a movement at a later stage when i will be discussing anti partition struggle then we will see that it will be taken up as a movement here they will just promote use of swadeshi that is used of goods use of goods manufactured in india okay because less and less british goods you will use then your economy will become self reliant because what happens is if you if people start buying indian goods just take the example have you heard about the patanjali have you heard about the patanjali yes so do you know what is happening in the market currently this patanjali products are sold in such a large extent that this people or the shopkeepers are facing stock out stock out in the sense they do not have product they are running out of stock why they are running out of stock because this patanjali has created a very good brand in the market that we are selling you genuine product we are selling it to you at low cost and we are not exploiting you so as a result because people are shifting away from other companies fmcg companies like itc hul png they are buying patanjali product now because there is huge demand for patanjali product patanjali is establishing more factories patanjali is increasing its production so similarly if this people have propagated the idea of swadeshi their motive was that if we promote the idea of swadeshi people will buy indian goods one people will buy indian goods then more indians will be willing to establish industries if more indians will establish the industries then india's output will increase because at this stage they cannot take any action against british on economic ground because taking action means you throw away british until and unless you throw away british you cannot do anything on economic front so what was the other way around ask people to buy indian goods if people will buy indian goods then obviously indian industrialists will come up indian industries will rise so there will be increase in the output produced in india as a result india will be able to come out of under development is it clear can you correlate what was the idea of swadeshi and how they wanted to solve economic problem of india with the use of swadeshi later you know what they will do just let me give you a hint about it later what they will do when they want to agitate against british they will use this method what they will do is and this is not for the first time that they will do after anti partition gandhi will do it after non cooperation also so what they will do is they will say after partition we will study partition don't worry about that but they will say 
that okay we need to teach british a lesson so let teach them lesson by boycotting their goods boycotting their goods and let their economy suffer no one will buy british goods so students leaders will stand in front of shops that are selling british goods and will stop people from going and buying those goods so as a result what will happen you are boycotting their goods so you are directly hurting their economy now this is something if if people decide that we will not buy your goods we will boycott your company this is something which british cannot force upon you if you will do violent action they may put you in jail or they may uh, run trial against you but if you are not willing to buy their goods they cannot sell it to you forcefully so after partition what will happen first they will start boycott movement that if british has inflicted pain upon us by uh, doing partition of bengal we will inflict pain on them by boycotting their goods now once you boycott their goods that doesn't mean that your demand will be killed because suppose if you need food you need food or if you need clothes you need clothes whether it is british manufactured or indian manufactured so even if you boycott their goods your need cannot be curtailed so then what they will start is they will start swadeshi movement so in swadeshi movement they will say let's open our school so that schools in this schools we will teach education in the way we want we do not want our children or our Uh, younger generation to go and study in this uh, british school so we will uh, make our clothes we will make our products whether it is matchstick or whether it is chemical whether it is iron steel anything we will make here so after partition they will start it as a movement that on one hand boycott british goods now how will you solve the problem because once you are boycotting british goods then obviously you need an alternative way to fulfill your demand so let's promote swadeshi so after that this will be used as a weapon against british on one hand there will be national boycott on the other hand to solve the problem created by national boycott promote swadeshi movement so they are also i will teach you about swadeshi movement so don't get confused that swadeshi started in 85 then why are you telling that it has been effective in 1905 here the idea of swadeshi has been given and propagated to solve the economic problem later it will be realized that this idea can be used as a weapon so first weapon is national boycott that we will not buy your goods now how will we fulfill our demand we will fulfill our demand by opening our own schools by opening our own colleges by making our own products okay so there we will see in anti partition struggle anti partition struggle is was all about so boycott and swadeshi movement boycott their goods and promote your own goods okay i will repeat this uh, after partition also so don't uh, get confused in this that why so they she started here then i am teaching after partition so in the political area i have told you that they have uh, passed this act in the economic front they gave this idea no major revolution or nothing happened but they promoted this idea so this is the main work that they have done past 20 years if you ask about achievement they were not able to achieve anything significant because this act was also not something which they were happy with because this was short of the demand which they made they made very big demands they did not wanted this just uh, because see this election was indirect plus expansion was little uh, apart from that very few indians were allowed to sit though council was expanded so they were not happy with this reforms they were not at all satisfied with this reform they were not agitating from so long for just this handful of reforms so this people will not be happy but still in the 20 years from 85 to 1905 this people will be able to achieve only this much they will be able to give economic impact they will be able to give the solution to the problem of economic impact and on the political front the british will pass indian council act so if you will look at the demands of the first congress or first resolution passed by indian national congress and if you see the resol 19th or 20th resolution passed in 1905 you will see there is hardly any change in the demands what they demanded in first year they continue to demand it for next 20 years so point here is that british will not listen to their demands british hate this people this people will always tell british that we are not conspirator we are not disloyal to you we are loyal to you we just wanted to get appreciation from you we wanted to get your attention we wanted to serve indians that's why we want reform in administration this people had no intention of throwing away british but british will not understand this british will think british will hate this people because british will think that this people who have taken birth or whose existence is because of me is revolting against me so british will not differentiate between those who revolted in 1857 and this people though this people had no idea of throwing away british so in 20 years and see their method is such that they cannot strike fear in the mind of british because you are just making petition so can do you think can you can you can you inflict fear in the mind of your ruler just by making petition 
सपोज इफ यू आर डिमांडिंग समथिंग जस्ट बाई वॉइसिंग योर जस्ट बाई रेजिंग योर वॉइस दैट आई वॉन्ट दिस आई वॉन्ट दिस कैन यू इन्फ्लिक्ट फियर नो सो दिस पीपल विल नॉट बी एबल टू इन्फ्लिक्ट फियर because see their action or their work is such that they will not inflict fear so if you are not inflicting fear british will not give you major concession on the one hand on the other hand they themselves do not wanted to throw away british so though british will not listen to their demand they will still not willing to throw away british so as a result this people will not be able to achieve anything significant for next 20 years now next question that will come into your mind that two question comes into your mind first question is that if they are not able to achieve anything should we call them a failure should we call moderate years a failure second thing that comes into your mind is that if this people were loyal to british despite knowing the fact that british are ruling us british are exploiting us where this people anti national first question that comes into your mind is whether this moderate year was failure because why you are thinking it as a failure because just now i have told you this people were not able to achieve anything significant so anyone will ask if this people are not able to achieve anything significant they should be failure if you are giving exam year after year and you are not clearing then anybody will say that you have failed so similarly this is the uh, thing that comes into mind that where their years was failure second thing it comes is that why this people wanted british rule in india british were exploiting india they were very well aware about the fact that india is getting exploited india is not getting political reforms britain at that time was progressing and britain was one of the most prosperous nation but when britain is ruling india india was under developing so don't you think that this people were anti national because you are supporting a force which is exploiting your country so don't you think these are anti national so this two portion comes in your mind when you will read history in the moderate years now i will reply to both the question first we will not consider them as a failure though they were not able to achieve their demand but it does not mean that they were failure second thing is they were not anti national also so there are some reason where we will evaluate what work they have done when we will do the evaluation then we will see neither we can call them a failure nor we can call them anti national because the work they have done has sown the seeds which will reap benefit later in the 1947 had they not built the ground how agitation would have been carried forward they have carry forward the agitation at any time when you start with any demand when you start with any movement it has to be slow in the beginning but that does not mean that it was failure extremists were able to rise only because moderates were there if moderates would not have done the work how would have you been able to know about the economic impact how would you have been able to know about your exploitation how would you have been able to know about the political agitation constitutional demands who will teach you that there is executive council there is legislative council legislative council should be expanded election should be there indian should be there who will teach you all these things if moderate would not have been there so neither their uh, achievement was failure though they they neither their years were failure because though they have not able to achieve significant thing but they have made a ground and they have made a very strong ground on the basis of which indian national movement was able to strengthen itself in the coming years and second thing is they were not anti national also because they were aware about the revolt they were aware about the british power and they knew that it is not possible to throw away british without any mass action this people had belief that british will help see later on their belief will also fade but you have to understand at that time they wanted british not because they wanted exploitation of india at that time they wanted british because this people's existence was because of british so they thought that if we got education because of british if we are enlightened because of british let british stay here so that all india progress they wanted progress of indians so they thought that if british will be happy with indians they will help us in progressing so that's why they wanted british to stay it's not that they wanted to british to stay so that they share administration with british and they uh, rule indians or they exploit indians like british that was not their intention they thought that british rule is necessary that's why they wanted british to stay they were well aware about the fact that british are exploiting but still they had believe now obviously once if your existence is because of someone's rule you have faith in them but over the period of time when they will work and when they will see that their demands are not met then later they will realize that okay 
British uh, cannot be allowed to stay in India or India cannot flourish under British rule. Because if they will not understand the true character, then why will they demand change from reform in administration to self-rule? Because in 1906 or Swaraj, because in 1906 when they will pass resolution, Congress a resolution will demand Swaraj. So why the same group of people who started with reform in administration started demanding Swaraj? So this people had some belief earlier that British is good. Later that belief will fade away with the exploitative action and then they will see that British is increasing their exploitative action. And then they will also start demanding Swaraj. So if this people would have been anti-national, then why would they demand Swaraj? They will never make demand for Swaraj. They will keep on demanding reform in administration. Right? There are more points. This is just an explanation so that you understand. I will give you list you the points so that in case if you have to write any concrete answer, you can write. But is this part clear? Is the discussion clear? That why we should not consider them as failure or why we should not consider them as anti-nationals? Is this discussion clear? Do you, are broad? Do you get a broad idea why we will not consider them as failure and anti-national? Okay. So let me give you some specific point that they have done so that... Uh, it is more clear to you. Evaluation of moderates. A revaluation of early national movement. Whatever you want to write, early national movement or moderates, your wish. Represented most progressive force of the time. Please write it. I will explain this point. Okay, just write it once. Explanation is not something very big where you need to take any running notes. So write it down and then I will give you a summary.
write it down see in the first point i am saying that it represent most progressive force of the time so why i am saying so because this people who represented the most progressive force of the time because they were the educated ones at that time they were the one who can give leadership to indians now had they would have if they would have not started the national movement at that time then tell me how would you start with the national movement if they would not have taken up the job in 1885 then obviously your beginning of the movement would have been delayed so maybe movement would have started in 90 1900 or 1905 1910 so if they would see at that time they were the one who can provide leadership so if this people who can provide leadership would not have given the leadership at that time and if they would have concentrated on their self interest then obviously our movement would not have been started second thing is they succeeded in arousing the feeling that we belong to common nation called india now at that time i have told you during the revolt that your patriotism or your loyalty was restricted to your ilaka or your region or your locality right there was no such concept of india as a nation though india existed existed much before though india existed much before british came to india but because india has a history of being ruled by various regional kingdoms so only when there was any uh, strong uh, emperor or any strong ruler he was able to unite india otherwise if any ruler was weak then india has the history of being ruled by different independent kingdom and that's why we have so much uh, regional diversity so this people were again united after british united india or after british controlled whole india this people were united by the work of moderates it was moderate who was able to tell people that you belong to a common nation this common nation is india your loyalty your patriotism your nationalism should not be to your locality your patriotism should be to your motherland which is india so one nation you belong to one nation so doesn't matter whether you are hailing from uh, uh, this uh, darjeeling or you are hailing from bengal or you are uh, hailing from maharashtra you belong to one common nation that is india so this feeling to people that belong to one common nation you are indians so you are bengali second marathi second but you are indian first so who was able to give this idea it was moderate third i have right it made people conscious this is conscious okay about their common political social and economic interest so obviously if indians will rule then only it will be ben- for the benefit of india so when you are talking about import duties when you are talking about reform in administration when you are talking about education this demand will not be restricted to one particular area this is something which will unite everybody why it will unite everybody because economic impact or uh, economic exploitation is felt by everybody whether you are a citizen of kashmir or you are a citizen of kanyakumari both of them will face the problem of economic exploitation equally some may face more hardship some may face less hardship but hardship will be there so similarly if you are facing political exploitation then exploitation is same so it was so moderates were able to make aware to people that see both of you are facing common problems so until both of you come together under a same umbrella we cannot give united opposition and until and unless we cannot give united opposition we will not get anything in return so it was about making different people aware that though you belong to different region though you belong to different communities but all of you are facing same problem and all of you have one common enemy and that is british so because they were able to show this it would moderates were able to unite people if moderates would not have done this work then obviously mass movement that has been started after anti partition and non cooperation movement that was uh, started by gandhi how that would have been successful gandhi was able to make an impact by launching non cooperation and non violent movement and he was able to get support of masses because masses were aware about the idea of nationalism masses were aware about the idea of democracy masses were aware about their common enemy masses were aware that yes they are facing economic and political hardship so who had made masses aware it was this moderates who have made if they would not have made aware then how extremists would have been able to successfully carry out swadeshi and boycott movement they would not because first in order to carry the movement you need to make people aware that see you are exploited you are ruined so you need to come together and then we need to fight so who had made or who has who has made this people aware about their rights who had aroused this feeling of nationalism who has made them aware that you have a common enemy it is this moderates that is what i have written in successive points aware about the existence of common enemy so who made people made people aware
made people aware about the existence of the common enemy so who was able to show you that you have a common enemy it was this leaders who were able to show that then it trained people in the art of political work art of political work in the sense like there are some some leaders who have started indian uh, indian national congress but obviously those who have started indian national congress will not remain forever more people will join so who is training them or who is giving this training so this were the early leaders who have given training to the next round of leaders who will come and who will join the national movement whether it is extremist who will come because if you see the roots of extremist most of the extremist were part of congress only later when they were dissatisfied with the work of moderates then they became extremists but earlier they were part of a larger organization that was indian national congress so who has given or who has trained this next group of leadership some people have given the leadership in 1885 they have started but what about coming years so who will train them this was this early leaders since they have started the movement so they learn something from their political work now who will train other people who are joining the political work this was this moderates whose work have trained them so if they would not have started the agitation how the next group of leadership who were more successful in achieving their demands they would have learned the political work they have learned the political work only because moderate have uh, achieved something or moderates were failed so they were able to learn from the failure or success of this moderates so this were the people who were able to train next round of leadership for the political work then it popularized the idea of democracy self government nationalism now uh, if this people see this people, i have told you that british education system was not such that which have taught you about democracy self rule self government civil liberty social reforms no british have not taught that to us british have taught us that we people are slave and we are want to serve british but this people because they have idea of english they were able to learn western thoughts modern ideas they were able to look at the work of the political and social thinkers of that time and they were able to read about the progressive people of that time so because they were aware about the idea they spread the idea had they if they would not have spread the idea how would other people in india or how other indians will come to know that there is a concept of nationalism because india was ruling or india was ruled by different dynasty different emperors so india had this uh, india never tested democracy india never had this idea of nationalism secularism uh, secularism is a different thing but india never had this idea of democracy civil liberty self rule democracy or parliamentary system or presidential system it was not there in india so who gave this idea to indians it is this moderates who gave this idea because we indians we are sure that yes we have been ruled by mughals before that we have been ruled by some other dynasty so we we have this uh, concept that yes we are being ruled and we were happy with being ruled because we have never seen any new thing our society our though our economy was integrated with the global economy because of the trade but those modern ideas were not prevalent in india so who who made indians aware about all this idea it was moderates okay is it clear this far is it clear this far okay so let's see two three more points are there
Now, sorry. Who who were able to show the economic impact? It was this moderates. Who is called the grand old man of India, Dada Bhai Naroji? He has given the drain of wealth theory. So who were able to show, see? Everybody was able to feel that yes, my economy is exploited or I am exploited. Whether it was peasant, whether it was cultivator, whether it was merchant. But who was able to show that see there is a systematic method in which your economy is getting exploited? It was this moderates who were able to show us that see your economy is getting exploited in a systematic manner. They were able to show that wealth is going out of your country. And see, not only this people have given you or made you aware about the problem. They have also given you the idea of solution that how can you stop this drain of wealth or how can you fight this economic underdevelopment. They gave the idea of Swadeshi that until and unless you promote use of domestic goods, until and unless you become self-reliant, until and unless people use Swadeshi, Indian economy will not grow. So it is not only that they have shown you this problem or they have made you aware about this problem. They have also given you the solution. They have told you, see, you you understood that okay, British is exploiting us. British rule is not good. But what is the solution? What once British are gone? So these people were able to show that you should rule democracy. There should be democracy. There should be election in our country. And you as an Indian should be ruled by an Indian because Indian will not exploit Indian the way British is exploiting Indian. So who were able to give you the problem or make you realize about the problem that was existing? Who have studied this problem? It is this moderates who have studied this problem, and not only they have studied the problem. After studying the problem, they have also given you the solution. Whether it is self rule, whether it is democracy, whether it is use of Swadeshi, it is they who have given this idea. On the basis of this idea, it was able to use national boycott as a tool against British in anti-partition struggle. So, though extremists played a greater role there, it. Uh, but how did they got this idea that we can use boycott on Swadeshi? They were able to see because they had this idea that was given by moderates. Now, since I am teaching this part as evaluation of national movement, and I do not. Think at all that this was a moderate year was failure or they were anti-national. That's why I am saying like this. But it does not mean that you will not. Criticize. I have also told you their criticism that for 20 years they were not able to achieve anything. These people were idealist. Idealist in the sense when you see that British rule is exploitative, how can you have a faith that one day British heart will change and they will rule in the favor of Indians? So uh, you call someone idealist like uh, India's policy on Pakistan. If we keep on thinking that one day a government will be formed in Pakistan, which will be compassionate toward, uh, which will have compassion toward India, or which will look into India's interest, then that is an idealist. They are exporting terror. They are exporting drugs. They are exporting another kind of problems into India. So how can we expect, or how anyone who expect that yes, things will improve one day, or anyone who thinks that Pakistan should not be replied in the language they understand best, it is idealism. Now, it is not right or wrong. It is just a difference, idealism and realism. Idealism is for those category or it is for those ideology which think in ideal terms. They do not think in realist terms. Like moderates were considered as idealists because they thought that with this demand and with this uh, methods, we will win heart of British one day and then they will uh, give us self-rule or they will fulfill our demands. But uh, extremists, what they thought is that a trial of strength is necessary between ruler and rule. So it is necessary to fight British uh, in the language they understand. They will respond terror with terror. So they were realist that, yes, if you are exploiting me, if you are killing me, I will kill you in return. So there is no right or wrong. Okay, please don't confuse it with right or wrong. But yes, uh, there is difference. One is idealist, one is realist. So idealist is when you don't look at the ground realities or when you don't look at the real situation or when you are not practical towards an approach, right? When you have more ideal values or when you apply more ideal solution, then you call it idealism. Like uh, earlier there used to be cross-border firing from Pakistan. So if you are not uh, replying cross-border firing with cross-border firing and then you think, no, we will solve it with talk, that does not happen because you have to understand that there are multiple power centers in Pakistan. One is ISI, one is Pakistan's army, another is their political government, So when and another part is their terrorist group. So when there are three, four power centers, you have to understand no matter how much uh, 
डिप्लोमेसी और हाउ मच स्टॉक यू डू विद देर विल बी सर्टेन प्रॉब्लम दैट विल बी देर सो ऑल द प्रॉब्लम विद द पाकिस्तान बिटवीन इंडिया एंड पाकिस्तान के नॉट बी सॉल्व थ्रू टॉक्स देर हैज टू बी अदर वे सिंस देर आर सो मेनी पावर सेंटर सो इट इज नेसेसरी दैट यू कम आउट ऑफ आइडियलिज्म जस्ट बिकॉज यू आर अ डेमोक्रेसी डज नॉट मीन यू दैट डज नॉट मीन दैन यू गो एंड अप्रिशिएट डेमोक्रेसी ऑफ अदर कंट्री वेयर डेमोक्रेसी इज नॉट वैल्यूड you have certain values you you respect your democracy and you should respect the idea of democracy also but that does not mean that you make foreign policy with a country assuming that their democracy is also strong when their democracy has failed when we know that there are multiple powers and like one of the idea that is given is why we do not engage military in uh, in diplomatic talks so india does not engage military in diplomatic talks means they are not respecting their democracy but the ground reality is obviously their military is a power center so government or any elected government cannot do anything without uh, complete approval of military so as a result when military is existing as a power center why don't you engage them so when you are not engaging them you are idealist that no i respect democracy so i will talk only with the political government that is elected when you are realist you will say let's see who are the power center and let's see with whom we can talk whether it is terrorist whether it is isi or whether it is their military okay so do you get an idea what is realism and what is idealism so it does not mean that in exam you will take a bias stand that so see my point here is neither you are going to take a stand that you will criticize this moderates nor you will completely appreciate them that uh, they were the one who were the most successful in your exam your answer should be balanced between the two okay but never call this people anti national or don't call them failure they were not able to achieve is different thing but don't call them failure okay point out their weakness what they were not able to achieve but don't call them failure or anti nationals so this is what we have to uh, learn about the moderates now this moderates have functioned till 1905 now three things will happen in 1905 which will again change the course of history or will uh, bring a new kind of energy in the indian national movement okay it will 